Welcome to the No Fame Podcast. Hey, you have a truck, right, Shadow Monster? Nothing makes me angrier than someone interrupting sleep. We're just trying to have a little rest in this evil fucking tower. How dare all of you? Let me hear the words I don't understand louder. Well, I don't think I'll be able to sleep after it. Oh, I dropped into a judge accent rather than a Lux one. Uh, no, but I have the next best thing. And I take I take out 50 feet of rope and a 10-foot ladder. Oh, well, that's not it. That's okay. He's like... He's not super visible. I mean, we did fight evil in the war, so I'm just trying to, like, did I see anything like this before? Am I familiar with this type of creature? Uh, Another natural 20. (laughs) What the fuck, man? Lux is already back in his bedroll, like, half asleep. Greer runs, leaps over the edge, sword, sword down. I will be truly shocked if it survives even your first hit. And welcome back to the No Fame Podcast. Hey. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Sinead Marguerite. I'm here as the Tall Tall DM for Tall Tall Tower uh, with my lovely friends, Josh Fritz, Justin Crane, Patrick O'Reilly, and Matt Higgin. We have announcements every time we do this. Yep. Like about our merch. Yeah. And our Discord. Yeah. And I should say more things about each of those. But if you go to nofame.ca, is that right, Justin? It sure is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can it sure click, is, Sinead. <laughs> you can click on the links and just go straight to that stuff, which it's all is there. super easy. So handy. Yeah. We've got it all. We are talking about our next campaign. Yeah. Are we? We are. Yep. Okay, yeah. So Tall Tall Tower is like not imminently done but we're we're getting to the end of this mini campaign that we're on uh and we're going to be doing a new campaign in a new system coming up in the new year higdon is going to be running a monster of the week campaign for us you want to say anything about it higdon insert promo here (laughs) (laughs) no uh yeah monster of the week uh it uh, is a system for any of you unfamiliar with it that uh, kind of, as the name suggests, uh, follows uh, shows like uh, Supernatural, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, where every episode you have uh, almost a like guaranteed encounter. And yeah, every episode is kind of like this uh, nice, tidy little self-contained uh, um, episode uh, and will have this beautiful overarching uh a uh, theme typically uh I, I mean the title of it is uh welcome to shutter creek so uh i, I don't think it's going to be all sunshine and roses but knowing this crowd here yeah, there's, there's going to be some some chuckles and all that but uh yeah fuck yeah yeah it's gonna be, sick. It's gonna be fun i gotta just throw it over to justin to see if i fucked up and forgot anything hey justin? we have Every Thursday, Stories from the Shore is streaming, featuring our great friends from Gut Punch RP and Charisma Saving Show, both of which are back. They're both streaming uh, their new episodes, and Charisma Saving Show also has their podcast version of those episodes. Uh, it's it's all good fun, and uh, Stories from the Shore has been super fun. It's been great to get back to the shore and introduce all kinds of elements from yeah. Null Shore with a whole different vibe it's been it's been good it's been good stuff uh yeah every thursday and then it's available the next day uh on our podcast sick yeah good stuff okay um i wrote a recap and here it is after jumping through a mysterious portal in pursuit of their abducted queen 
the party has been climbing a strange and evil tower for what they now know to have been months to the folks back home. They've encountered strange trophy rooms, prisons, and places brought from other realities into the tower, but now appear to be reaching levels more recently visited by the tower's vile creator. After discovering direct connections to their own world in the study, they ascended to find another prisoner, familiar and alive. The queen's cousin Gurch, known to most of the party due to his long-standing support of Harry and usefulness as a spy during the war. Freed from his underwater cell after a surprise struggle with an octopus, Gurch was found to be in a horrible state. Physically and mentally tortured for an extended period of time, it took multiple attempts to convince him that you were really there to help. He spoke a bit about his imprisonment, you all enjoyed a magical feast, and you bedded down in place beside the former pool of water, now drained. A few hours into your rest, WB-40 was woken by a strange noise and discovered a shadowy creature creeping out of the stairwell that led further up the tower. Attempting to throw more light on the situation, but failing, you were all woken by a combination of WB-40's and his bees alarmed noises. So... Everyone has rolled initiative. And the situation is WB was on watch and was woken by the noise of an approaching creature. That creature is standing in the entranceway to the upper staircase. And uh, everybody is now awake. So WB, you got the highest initiative and... You weren't surprised by this creature, so you were able to get oh, yes, a monster. that spell off without it having a chance to do something. But the spell failed, and you yelled to wake everyone up. So that was the first turn of the first round. Judge would be next, but you were just woken from slumber, and uh, you're surprised in a fight. So we're going to skip your turn, and we're going to skip Grimier's turn. The creature is going to use its movement to get up to the only person who's directly threatened it and is going to use both of its multi-attacks on WB. So the first one's going to be a claw attack. Christ. That's just rude. 12? No. Yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. And the second one's going to be a bite. So as this creature runs up to you, you can see it a little bit more clearly. It has this shadow almost wisping off of it like smoke, so you realize that part of the reason you can see it clearly when you were looking earlier is because the edges of its body are blurred by the shadow that kind of cascades off of it. It's moderately humanoid, but the limbs are a little too long, the feet are a little too big, the toes are a little too clawed, the fingers are a little bit too distended, the knuckles a little too knobbly, and the fingers, as they come out to claw at you, are, instead of having a finger within a fingernail, there's just one gross black appendage that goes into a sharp point as it reaches out to slash at you. Uh, You manage to back away and duck and dodge the claw attack and as you come back around the mouth with the protruding um, tongue you now realize is not just one tongue, it's two tongues that spiral around each other and seem able to move of their own accord too far out of its mouth very unsettling and that will be a 16 to hit nope okay you managed to dodge the bite attack as well buddy i got two tongues (laughs) i'm just working mountain town the creature's gonna stay in melee with you wb uh next up would be gurch but he is also surprised and next would be lux but lux you're also surprised so we're back around to wb does this creature appear to be a monster sorry before you cast a spell though i need you to roll a dc or i need you to roll a con save dc 12 no i don't want to <laughs> too bad do it. Want. do it no do it oh that was so close to oh. being a beat or a natural 20 i rolled a four i'm gonna use a lucky thing luck be 
Lock B, go. <laughs> one B goes out to take the hit. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. That was almost a net one. Wow. Um, lock B, two, go. <laughs> uh, Fuck it. Fuck it. Can you do two locks at once? Yes. Turn? Okay. 21. <laughs> Jesus. Fuck All you. right. Um. <laughs> Why didn't you just use a hero point and save your luckies? Because I forgot about it. <laughs> 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 I'm going to be using mine so quickly. No, I'm going to save them. I'm going to save them for the big bad. Okay, so you pass the con save, which means Fuck it, right that you're not slightly irritated <laughs> yeah. by the smell of the room. <laughs> As this creature has gotten up in front of you and now has been standing there for a minute, you realize that along with the shadow pouring off of it, there's a horrible stench. And you're able, because you don't breathe, as a construct to avoid taking too much of it into your body. So you have successfully avoided being poisoned. Oh, fuck. I'm resistant to poison anyway. I should have just took it. And that's how we waste your shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can I use a luck point to go back and not use Absolutely my Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's how that worked. Cast light on him again. <laughs> All right. Charm monster. Okay. Is that a saving throw? Yeah, 16 wisdom. 17. Nope, try again. <laughs> Goodbye, luck point. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Ooh, nat one. Ooh. You attempt to charm a creature you can see within range. It must make a wisdom saving throw. So with advantage of you and your companions are fighting it. Oh. I didn't read that part out. Just forget <laughs> about that. Uh, if it fails the saving throw, it is charmed by you until the spell ends or until your companions do anything harmful to it. Charmed creature is friendly to you. When the spell ends, the creature knows it was charmed by you. It lasts for an hour. Well, I should have had advantage, right? Yeah. No. Yes. So we'll wipe <laughs> your that's... use of luck, but I'm also just going to re-roll from the start. Uh, well, if you had advantage, the first one would have succeeded... And then, yeah, the first one would have succeeded anyway, so we'll... Okay, if you want to use luck again, then... But you still get advantage now for the... Yes. Yeah, I'll just, just yeah, use luck again. Okay, okay, uh, they failed. Ooh. Ha-ha. Yeah. Hello, friend. <laughs> You'll have to speak up. I don't speak that language. As... Let me hear the words I don't understand louder. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how it works. As you cast this spell at the creature hitherto unnoticed two small black dragon wormlings familiar to you scurry up out of <laughs> the hole in the ground and they're both going to there's um, going to be a fucking fight here whether you want it or not <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're going to both try and bite you WB well they don't get advantage for not being seen the first one is a 19 to hit yeah that hits Okay, so that is three points of piercing damage plus... She is but a scratch. Don't forget we had temporary hit points from Higden. Oh, did we? Yeah, 13 of them. Yeah. Two acid damage. Oh, they must have disappeared with the um, when I leveled up. Yeah, so that was three piercing damage and two acid damage. And then roll a con check or con save for your spell. Uh, 18. Okay. And then the second one is going to bite you as well. 23 to hit so yes. that'll be eight piercing damage and Goodbye, temporary hit points. three acid damage so oh, roll damage. a dc 11 concentration fuck you right Nine. or is that wrong should that have been 10 oh you failed anyway all right yeah. it's almost a 17 wait can i use a hero point for that yeah if you want to fuck right <laughs> Go, D6. I choose you. I rolled a six. Hey. Okay. All right. You maintain concentration. You have a pacified shadow creature in front of you and two wormlings also in melee with you. I wish I had seen them before. I would have cast it at a higher level. Mm -hmm. But you didn't because they were stealthier than the shadow creature, which was really, really weird for me. Is there anything else you want to do on your turn, WB? They were holding for you to make an aggressive action, so you still have the rest of your turn. If you wanted to look bonus action, movement, whatever. Can I give can I ask him to do anything, the charmed fella? He's friendly to me now. That's a, that's it, right? I mean, it's not like I'm 
Hey, you have a truck, right, Shadow Monster? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have my turn. <laughs> okay. Uh, judge. All right. I'm going to make my way up to Bramir. On the way, can I... What kind of check can I do uh, to kind of discern anything from this shadow creature? I mean, we did fight evil in the war, so I'm just yep. trying to, like, yeah. did I see anything like this before? Am I familiar with this type of creature? You can roll either religion or history. I'll do religion. Uh, 16. Okay. You're not sure if you've seen this exact creature before, although it seems vaguely familiar. However, you can tell due to the multitude of evil creatures that you did fight in the war that this is an undead creature. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely evil. I will get up next to Grimir and uh, say to him, I, I, just like old times in the war, um, you know, uh, let's light this shit up. <laughs> Pardon me, <laughs> I'm still groggy. And uh, I'm going to touch his weapon and cast a spell. Okay. His weapon now is imbued with holy power. Yes. Uh, it emits a 30-foot radius of bright light and dim light for an additional 30 feet. And if the weapon isn't already magical, it becomes for the duration. It was, but I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, it also deals an additional 2d8 radiant damage per hit. So go ham, friend. I will. Oh, I should have mentioned the shadow one is a friend for the moment. Uh, listen, I know what they do in the shadows, and I don't much care for it. Light them up. That? <laughs> <laughs> I'm unstoppable. I mean, I figured you get the best use out of this. Have fun. Thank you. And I will end my turn. Okay. Then we are on to Grimir. All right, here I go. Uh, yeah, Grimir is going to run up towards one of the black. Can you make it to... I've got 30 feet of movement. Make it to one of the wormlings. Sure, you can just make it to a wormling. Hell yeah. Grimir runs up to wormling B and is going to make some attacks. I get three attacks per fucking action. Jesus. So here we go. Three attacks. I don't like wasting spells. I figured it was best used on you. That's a natural 20 for one of them. Uh, that's uh, 21 for the second attack and 11 for the third attack. The first two hit. The third does not. Yeah, so that's going to be 6d8 for the first attack. <laughs> One second. 30 damage, 30 slashing, magical slashing for the first attack. That was the nat 20. That's slashing am radiant, right? Right, yeah. Should I break that up, Shanid? Uh, no, that's fine. Okay. 16 slashing radiant for the second attack. How do you want to do this? Yeah! <laughs> uh, Grimir doesn't fuck around. Things are, shit's hitting the front. <laughs> Nothing fancy. He just like makes one slash and then the second slash just like the natural 20 just clean cuts off its head uh, as he gets ready to well his third attack then didn't hit I guess right no but it was well dead by the time you got to your third attack so. <laughs> nothing makes me angrier than someone interrupting sleep we're just trying to have a little rest in this evil fucking tower how dare all of you uh, as yeah Grimir does all of that stuff and uh Premier's going to just kind of end his turn there, waiting to see what happens. The Shadow Beast is going to try and just sneak backwards towards the stairwell. <laughs> so it's going to use its movement to, it's going to use its action to disengage as a hyper cautious measure. And then it's going to back up towards the stairwell and put itself back in the, the doorway. Where are you going, friend? The second wormling is going to scoot a little bit to the side and release its acid breath at WB and Grimier. Okay. So that's a, DC, a dex save. I'm going to use my shield master ability to give advantage on this dex save. To yourself? To myself, yes. Yeah, <laughs> okay. 20, I have 14. 22. Both of those pass. So you guys take 11 acid damage as you manage to dodge most of the acid breath. And after 
seeing its fellow cut down and releasing that acid breath, it's going to throw itself off the edge of the platform no. um, <laughs> and try and fly back down. But you guys both get a tax of opportunity if you'd like them. You had so much to live for. My reactions are so valuable. No, I've already used my reaction for the dodge, so I can't do anything. Okay. The other wormling jumps off the edge of the now basically pit and its wings unfurl and it flies down towards the bottom. Gurch is up next and Gurch uses his movement to get over to the downward staircase and tries to hide inside of it. Incredibly fair. Disadvantage. Yeah, Understandable. (laughs) That's not, that's okay. He's like, he's not super visible. (laughs) He's doing all right. He's like, He's over in the corner like an NPC in Skyrim. Just, ah, ah. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, he's doing his must best. Must have been the wind. <laughs> and then we're down to Lux. So Lux, at this point, the, the dragon is descending towards the center of the pit, towards that open drain hole. And the shadow creature is backed up into the entryway of the staircase up and just kind of watching you all more so Grimier, you, and Judge. It doesn't seem to be paying too much mind to WB anymore. Well, I don't think I'll be able to sleep after it. Oh, I dropped into a Judge accent rather than a Lux one. I don't be able to think I'll be able to sleep after this, so I'm going to use my new class feature and summon my Hound of Ill Omen. I guess I'm in within 120 feet of myself, so I'm going to put it right next to this shadow buddy. Okay. It says I roll initiative for it. Do you want me to do that or just put it on my initiative? Um, I'm open to either. What would you prefer? It's obviously pretty easy to run it on your initiative, but if you wanted it to be in a different spot, I'm game. All right, I'll roll initiative for it just to make it complicated. Oh, it got a 20 for initiative, I believe. It did better than you. It did better than me. I'm mad about it, okay? And so I used three sorcery points to do that. Which is great. Now I don't have any left. And for my... That was a bonus action. And then for my action, I'm going to cast Lightning Bolt at this shadow <laughs> creature. Okay. So it gets to make a deck save, but because my Hound of Ill Omen is next to it, it's at disadvantage. Okay. That's a 15. Fuck, it made it. It had to get 15. Ah. Uh, so it takes half damage of 8 DC. Use your hero points. No, it's a save, right? Can't, yeah, it's like, I don't think I can use a hero point for that. Should have took luck. <laughs> Uh, I should should have taken a look. You're right. I'm sorry. Uh, So take 16 lightning damage. That's halved already? Yes, that's halved already. And is the charm person gone or is the charm creature gone now, WB? Yeah. Okay. That's your turn, Lux? Yeah, I'll just, I'll head north. I'll head towards the staircase going up, like towards the shadow creature. Okay. How far towards it? Mm, Let's go. I probably would have had to stand up. So 15 feet. Okay, so we'll say you, like, have the distance. You're probably near where WB is. Sure. And Grimier. You don't have to be, like, right in a group with them, but you guys will be around the same area. Okay, back around to the top of the initiative order with WB. Uh, I will... Lux ruined my plans here. <laughs> it's okay. Wait, sorry, mate. I was going to polymorph it into... I was going to ask it to let it be polymorph it into something and just put it in my fucking chest of holding and just fucking kill it instantly. <laughs> just it I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's all right. That might have gone that might have gone terribly bad anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, fuck it. Let's try this again. I'll lean down and look at the the wormling and cast charm. No, nah, fuck it. He's on his way away. Ice knife the the thing. The shadow monster. Okay, is that a roll to hit? Yeah, I'm going to do it at... I don't really use 5th level much, so I'll just do it at, with one of those. Jeez, that was almost... No, that's 27. Jesus, yeah, that hits. Yeah, 6 damage. Oh, and then it has to succeed on a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Oh, 16. Because it explodes after it hits them. Oh my god. Natural 1. Haha. <laughs> so that's uh, <laughs> a 66 cold damage. 20. So that's 26 damage total? Yes. 26 cold bees of damage. 
Christ. All right. The ice knife is just a cold bee stinging it. The creature looks coated in frozen undead flesh now. The shadow has stopped seeping from it and parts of its body look ready to flake off with this explosion of ice that has done some serious, serious damage to it. So, Judge, you are now up if that was all for your turn, WB. Yeah, I'll just look at it and be sad and be like, could have been a friend. Who took the most damage, apparently, like, from what I could see from that acid splash? I think they both took equal damage, but WB also got hit by a dragon wormling. Yeah, on a scale of 1 to 74, I'm at about a 60. (laughs) On a scale of 1 to 91, I'm at 14. I'm going to toll the dead. I'm going to toll the dead on the wee dragon that's fleeing. How far away is he? 30, 35 feet. Was he hit at all or damaged? No, no. All right, I'll toll the dead on the shadow creature. Okay. Is that a roll to hit? I can't remember. Uh, Yeah, wisdom 16 save. Rolled a 19. Oofa, nothing. All right. A bell tolls out. Everyone looks around and nothing happens. Ding. Well, that's not what you want. Yeah, Judge is going to come up um, towards the stairs. He'll move north based on Justin's drawing. Yeah, okay. So just for clarity, the creature has backed into the stairwell, so you won't be able to get behind it because it's backed into a crevice, basically. The others aren't in melee with it. They didn't follow it up there, so... There is a wolf in melee with it, though. Oh, sorry, yeah, there is a wolf in melee with it. We'll call the wolf. Do you want the wolf to be, like, in the stairwell with it or just in front of the stairwell? I thought it was a hound. It's a hound, sorry. It's a... It was the stats of a dire wolf, my bad. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was ruining my immersion. (laughs) Could it have been like behind, like on top of the stairs looking down at it? Yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah, so like to cut off its retreat basically. Sure, so then in that case, you would be able to flank it if you want it, Judge. I will, Judge will pull out his shield and his war hammer and absolutely get in flanking. Okay, is that your turn? That's it. There we go then. Grimier, you are probably like 15 feet away from it maybe you're with uh, you're in the area of WB and Lux Judge has it cornered in the stairwell Lux's shadow hound is behind it it looks rough it's hissing it's frozen what do you want to do can I get is Judge blocking the whole stairwell can I get in for an attack or is most it- of these stairwells that I've been describing have been like 10 feet wide so we'll say that there is room for you to sneak in if you want. Yes, Grimir will... You charge. won't get flanking, though, because Judge has gotten himself directly opposite the Shadow Hand. That's okay. I've got a million attacks anyway. <laughs> yeah, Grimir will charge... <laughs> I was thinking about Grimir leaping over the edge with his sword <laughs> and stabbing down on the, the yeah, wormling, be because this wormling has come back to... the Letting them go did come back to quite literally bite us in the ass. Uh, but I have the holy weapon and I don't want to waste it being stuck at the bottom of a pit. So Grimir charges past Judge into the stairwell to make three attacks against Shadow Be- Shadow Boy, Shadow Friend. Uh, another natural 20. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Uh, and a 19 and a, and a 23. The lowest is a 19. Okay, those all hit. Yes! And some of this is radiant damage now, which I can I can separate that if you want. I will be truly shocked if it survives even your first hit. <laughs> okay, great. 27. Uh, and How do you want to do this? Oh, yeah! Uh, just straight through the chest with <laughs> the holy radiant blade as the light starts like, almost like an anime situation where the light like starts coming out of where it might have eyes or like any holes in its body starts like emitting light as the whole thing just like falls to pieces from the light of Judy pouring through this radiant blade. Oh, that's right. Gamir's like, fuck yeah, that was f- judge. High five. Just before the light bursts from its insides, goats and goats of this shadow slash smoke come out with this truly horrible stench. And then they're swiftly burned away as it explodes in a radiant shower of undead body parts. Uh, uh, Grimir's like, high five, Judge, wait! I've only used 15 feet, so I'm going to use 
the 15 to leap over the jump away <laughs> career runs yeah. thinking of this fucking wormling leaps over the edge sword sword down uh, if you want i can roll new attacks against it as i as i as will I. get you to roll new attacks i will also get you to roll do we think acrobatics or athletics for jumping on top of this flying black wormling halfway down a hole we think and i um either really can i use a reaction to cast feather fall on him that'll slow uh, me down though it slows you to 60 feet per round yeah that's that spell is a reaction isn't it oh, okay yeah yeah. Cool. yeah then yeah okay do i get advantage on my acrobatics maybe that's what i was hoping with him um no because you have to make that decision as you jump there's no real way to like fix your trajectory once you're falling this will however mean that when you hit the bottom of it <laughs> you won't take the damage that you are going to take from yeah, falling yeah. to the bottom of this 60 foot pit yeah i knew what i was gonna get to okay i can roll <laughs> acrobatics uh hey 19 acrobatics okay then yeah roll your attack and then i only have two attacks left this round that's fine yeah uh, that's a 17, no, a 16 and a 15. Neither of those hit. Damn it! <laughs> so you are traveling 60 feet around? Yes. yes. You fall to the bottom of the pit past the <laughs> dragon wormling. <laughs> but now I'm waiting for it. I <laughs> land on my feet. Like, <laughs> bring it on, you flying fuck. Are you, where would you like to be at the bottom? I assume right by the drainage hole? Yeah, I'm just like trying to block as best I can to stop this thing from getting away. Okay. Anything else you want to do? I don't know what else you could no, do. No, there's nothing else I could probably okay. do. <laughs> Lux, would you like your shadow hand to do anything? It turns into shadow and disappears the minute the oh. Premier killed the shadow monster. Oh. <laughs> okay. So it looks like you killed both is what you see. Uh, no, I already, I went for a high five and then I leaped. I didn't see anything. Yeah. <laughs> No one saw the shadow hand. What have you been yeah. doing? <laughs> Boy, I shot that lightning at it. Oh, yeah. Okay, the wormling is going to continue flying towards the bottom. You're standing right over the drainage hole, Grimir. Yes. It's going to fly straight towards you, towards the drainage hole. It's got a 60-foot flight speed. It was 30 feet down the hole already. It's going to use its action to disengage and sneak right into the hole past you. You can't hit it, right? Uh, I mean, if it used disengage, I can't trigger my attack. Yeah. So it was 30 feet up, so it used 60 feet of movement, which would put it within 30 feet of me still, yeah? It would, yeah. Uh, Grimir sees it. You can't it. see it oh. unless you stick your head in. Can I stick my head in? <laughs> I mean, oh, <laughs> after its turn, it's Lux's turn. If we're staying in strict initiative. Oh, yeah, because if a creature, um, it, it might, no, my spell says a creature ends its turn within 30 feet that I can see. So, yeah, I can, if I can't see it, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, unless you were like, yeah, no, unless you had decided to get into the drainage hole. <laughs> no, and it's not my turn anymore anyway, so okay. uh, we can ignore that. I was going to charm it to tell it to come back. <laughs> So there are no more enemies around. Can I try something before we uh, exit initiative? Sure. Because uh, I would be next, right? You would be, yeah. It's your turn. I want to lean over the edge of the pit and shoot a firebolt down the drain. Because it can go sure. 120 feet. Uh, you can, uh, so it's a roll to hit. I'm assuming disadvantage because I probably wouldn't be able to see it. Yeah. You're shooting it down a tube. You're not exactly sure where, but you could make an educated guess how long to send it down the tube before you exploded it. Lux, your blast visor is up. <laughs> that's that's a 19 still. That hits. Oh, I used the force. <laughs> B force. So that's 3d10. B leader standing by. <laughs> that's 15 fire damage. Ooh. 15 fire damage. Okay. You hear an explosion within the tube. You hear an animalistic shriek. But then you do hear the skittering of claws against stone as it continues down. You know that you did hurt it, but it appears to still be still be alive. And unless you guys want to continue an initiative. That's all I want us to do. Okay. <laughs> WB, you would be next if you, but all the enemies are out of sight or dead. Yeah, I got, I got nothing at this point. Okay. I'm after Judge and I'm um, contemplating climbing down this fucking tree. Oh, God. <laughs> 
How far did you say he's down in the hull? 30 feet. I mean, you're not 100% sure. Uh, out, like above table, they've got a 60 foot flying speed. So it was just like leaving. All right. Stick your, stick your sword, stick your weapon in the hole and close your eyes. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Me? I know what you're doing. <laughs> it's just some kind of Judy's glory hole type of deal. <laughs> oh, you know it. Judy's hole of glory. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if if you'll allow him to just kind of like stick his sword in the hole, I'm gonna dismiss the spell. If you want to hold your action, he his go is after you for sticking and like fighting things. But yeah, tell him what you want him to do, and then Grimmy, if you want to go along with it, do whatever you want, Judge. Yeah, no. If he uh, if he does that, then all I would do is dismiss the spell, and when that happens, it in a thirty foot radius emits a radiant burst. Okay. And um, anything within 30 feet that I choose, which is anybody, anything that's not my party, yep, um, has to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. Or take a uh, shitload of radiant damage and be blinded. Okay. Yeah, Grimir, like, dr- if you hold, Grimir drops his arm into the hole and, like, covers his... You said con? Con 16. Covers with shield. Ah, I rolled a 15. Ooh. So Uh-oh. close, little baby. Hey, hey. 17 radiant damage, and it's blinded. Ooh. Okay. Another inhuman shriek. Hey, we got it. That ends in a gurgle and just the faintest, weakest sound of skittering as it continues oh. down the pipe. Oh, wait. That and wasn't my whole beyond. turn, though. That yeah. was Judge holding his action <laughs> on my turn. If we're, if we're, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Grimir is climbing down that hole with his fucking crossbow. Oh, god damn. <laughs> okay. He looks at his sword and he's like, well, the sword's gone out. And he throws it behind him and dinks in the in this 60-foot chamber. And he's like, I'm going in. <laughs> he like starts... I did that hoping he wouldn't have to do this, guys. <laughs> as, as, as Judge is spending the rest of his turn tying the ropes together to eventually get him out. <laughs> I'm going after the, I'm not having this thing come fucking back and fighting us at the very end as some surprise. plug the oh, hole. Yeah, we yeah, didn't get we just, rid of the drain plug. Yeah. No, but it was in a completely different room that we fought it originally. It can just get around. I'm going in. So as you <laughs> lower yourself into the drain pipe, you'll see that it is, it's a, a straight drop and then it curves out and then it starts spiraling around like a corkscrew. So it's a continually lowering spiral of a drain pipe. Okay, as I'm like getting my way down into this fucking, (laughs) moving down into this drain pipe, can I see it at all? I have 30 feet of movement, so however you want me to divvy that up. Once you've used 20 feet of your movement, you'll be able to see it and it'll be 10 feet away from you so you can get to it in your full movement. No, once I see it, I have my crossbow, so I'm just going to make okay. three shots with my crossbow at it. Okay, you're 10 feet away from it. Hell yeah. Crossbow! What is my crossbow? crossbow? It's 19, 27, and a, not a, a miss for the last one. Okay, first two hits. That is... 19 total for both attacks. I mean, okay, it had one hit point. <laughs> yeah. I was so ah. happy. <laughs> it was almost gone. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Grimir was you, uh, committed. He jumped 60 feet. I'm not jumping 60 feet and not going after this fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> How does your crossbow finish the last wormling? Yeah, Grimir uh, just oh. all business. Two, two headshots, just like... <laughs> Like, got him! <laughs> you hear it echoing out of the, <laughs> got him! Out of the pipe. As he dives down, he screams, pull! <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you want to do? You gonna leave that, all that potential jerky down there? You gonna bring it back up? <laughs> we have a lot of jerky up there already, right? I killed one of them. Yeah. Well, we're well fed. Great, Grimir has to climb out of the hole first. I mean, out of yeah, the pipe. Yeah, and then climb up out of the drain pipe and then figure out a way up out of the 60 foot hole. Yeah. I could just nap down here. What do you guys think? Is there a feather lift spell you got? <laughs> uh, no, but I have the next best thing. Rope. And I take, I take out 50 feet of rope and a 10 foot ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Tie the rope to the top rung of the ladder and lower it down. Yeah. All right. It doesn't it doesn't quite reach, but he's tall enough. He Do I just hold there. on to the ladder and you guys pull me up? Yeah. Sure. 
Lux is already back in his bedroll, like half asleep. <laughs> we use Lux as the uh, the anchoring point. <laughs> yeah, tied around my waist. Like, <laughs> yeah, we tie the rope around Gertrude's waist. He's dead weight. Yeah. It's true. There's a lot of water going on there. Am I am I out DM? Ain't nothing heavier than a waterlogged orc. You can make a acrobatics or athletics to use the the ladder and the rope to get up out of the hole. Does he get an advantage where we're helping pull? Yes. Oh hell yeah, advantage. Natural twenty for a twenty eight. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Is that your <laughs> third natural me. twenty today? Jesus. Right? It it, those were all on three separate dice, actually. I've had a natural twenty on each one of my little dice I'm rolling. Uh, Amherst dice. They're used up day. for the year. Amherst dice. The no fame <laughs> DM curse continues. I was so excited for this fucking shadow ghast creature. It was not a shadow assassin, uh, and it did fuck all. Yeah. Welcome, the entire time. Welcome to my life. <laughs> shadow shadow ghast. Yeah, it's uh, from Explorer's Guide to Wild Man. Oh, okay. Mm. Higdon has it right because Higdon doesn't have to roll in Monster of the Week. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, well, I guess Grimir gets up. I didn't want to, I just didn't want that thing to get out because it's already come back once. So who knows when it would come back again? It was better to no, finish I it off. I understand. I understand. That was WB sweet. WB is over, like, fucking elbow deep inside of the mouth of the dead wormling trying to get the breath thing out of it. Judge, that, that holy weapon was so fucking cool. I'm all about that. Gurch creeps out of the shadows of the lower staircase and back over to you guys. God, fuck. What are you? <laughs> Gurch, are you okay? Sorry, that was surprising. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it really shouldn't have been, I guess. Uh, this tower's horrible and you should always expect evil things. You're, um, you're right. Yep. That's it. You should always expect evil things in this tower. That, that's been the story so far. Everything has been unexpected and evil. So, Except uh, Gemma. Gemma was lovely, and uh, we have a plan. We miss Gemma. Gemma was a real bright light in here for us. Uh, we'll tell you all about we miss her later. Gemma. Yeah. We'll get Gemma back, I think. We have a plan for getting Gemma back. Yeah, we do. That'll be our one-shot bonus episode that we do down the road. We come back to this campaign, the search for Gemma. Uncut gemmas. Uncut gemmas. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Amazing. Uncut gemmas in the glory holes. <laughs> oh, Judy's holes of glory. That's a, that's a great band name. <laughs> <laughs> Uncut gemmas in the glory holes? <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah. So you guys get all sorted out again, and you move your, your sleeping rolls away from the dragon blood and the... the harvesting mess that WB made from the corpse, the exploded shadow ghast sludge that's now melted from the ice attack and set up another round of watches attempting once more to get a long rest in this horrible evil tower and that is where we're going to call it for the evening so we'll catch up with you guys hopefully well rested next time around on the no fame podcast thank you everyone for listening hope to see you next week good night Night, night. Good night, everyone. Uh, Lux, say good night. Lux is sleeping soundly. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Just out. Me, 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 me. <laughs> Luckily, I have a CPAP machine built in. It slams it down on Lux's face. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the No Fame Podcast. The best way to support the show is just by listening, which you're already doing. Amazing. The second best way to support our show is by telling your friends. Hey, why not, right? You can find links to our podcast, YouTube, Discord channel, social media, and so much more at nofame.ca. You can support the show for as little as a toonie at patreon.com slash nofamepod or buy us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash nofamepod. Thanks again for listening, and we will catch you later on. I, can I use a lock thing for the light to work? Dude, that was last episode. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I, I, listen, you missed 100% of the shots that you don't ask for. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the shots I missed. <laughs> no. No. I do like the hustle, though. <laughs>